Do I have to get out of bed to fly an airplane? I don't want to get up. No? But you get to fly in an airplane with somebody who's never flown one before. You can't just talk about getting out of bed. You actually have to get out of bed. Maybe when the coffee's pouring. What are we doing today? First, we're turning off that annoying fan. Yes. And second of all, I'm going to try to scare the living snot out of three grown adults. <laughs> I've been visualizing it. I wake up thinking about rudder and yaw control and throttle and carburetor heat. And seriously, I was dreaming about landing in crosswinds really? <laughs> last night. It's scary! So we're going flying today. Bugaboo, hold down the fort, gay. Bugaboo. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's one. Oh, that's pretty oh, good. Oh, that's pretty good sneak pace. excited to fly today is that I'm reading a book about flying a plane and it, like it's really hard to grasp some of these kind of abstract concepts but I'm sure it's intuitive once you feel it when you go to driving school and they say if you're sliding steer into the slide which is counterintuitive and if anybody's seen the movie cars and they oh, yeah. go around the dirt track yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like what you do when you're sliding is you steer into the slide and he's like steer into the slide you're stupid old man and of course he figures it out. Well, yeah. that's the that's the non-intuitive part that when you read a book, like it doesn't come through. So I'm excited today to just touch it, like feel yeah. it, and I think it'll help that data sink in. What rookie mistake did you make already? We're gonna have to abort this mission. Temporarily, because I didn't bring the right shoes. So, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so Alyssa is gonna save my bacon, yep. and she's gonna get my passport, which I also forgot. Look at me go, first day of school, and I'm forgetting my yep. crayons. I didn't bring my ruler, my pencil sharpener. Oh, thank you <laughs> for saving my school. Mm. Some stuff on the back about the landing phase is that they don't know their checklist, so they get lost in it. That's just a copy of the checklist that's in the aircraft. You had to taxi the plane. Yeah. Cannot start an engine near, near a hangar. <laughs> that would be very bad because all the jets so the product thought, blast will go that way. Was that not taxing? No. Okay. Taxing is to the <laughs> runway. Okay. Okay, so we'll need you to get in, Alyssa. Passenger brief? Yeah. Those so. are passengers now. Clear! That could we, we can talk right now because they don't have their stuff on. Okay, so it's not distracting. So we can just sit here and go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. So a radio test, obviously, we're talking right now, so... So that's in just intercom, yeah. Then sometimes it's best to just let go of the yoke so you don't try to turn with it. Just, uh, now we can go do the run-up checklist. Okay. Um, and then the uh, best rate of climb speed, is that correct, is yep. 73 yep. knots. So we want to get to an attitude where we can maintain 73 knots. Yeah, is approximately. Yep. So yeah. about now I put full right rudder until so you can't push it anymore. Okay. There you go. And then now we're just steering with our feet. Okay. Air speed's good. RPMs are good. Oil pressure's good. Okay, good. Okay, and coming up there. All right, so there's rotation. So lift your nose off the ground. Just pull back. So I pull back. There, we're leaving. And just find that pitch out too that's going to give you 75. And then notice how we're starting to turn this way. There you go. Give it a little right rudder and right aileron to pick that wing back up. Well, let's just, we'll just climb up to about 4,000 feet. Should work today. Feel like we're climbing a little too much? Is that normal? Yeah, we're climbing at 60 to 73. So we're climbing at VX versus VY. Um, I'm not too worried about it. RPMs are going to climb, right? Because yeah. they're not working as hard. So right. now you can bring your power back and set it about 23. Okay. Work. And we'll just head up the valley. So yeah, good. Rolling out. Using those rudders. Good.
shut down, I mean, it's on the checklist. I usually just use the acronym of four M's. So music, which would be your, here, so shut that up. What do you think? Interesting. Were you doing most of the flying? Oh yeah, but it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's definitely not what I was. I think our relationship just went to a new level. You de you're either crazy or you're fun. Yeah. One of the. <laughs> does it feel good to pop your flying bubble? It does. I definitely want a lot more flight time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Keep track of what we did today and mm -hmm. what went well and what went very badly. It's, it's kind of fun to see where we live from a different perspective. Yeah, we got to fly over our house, which is kind of cool. You sounded so official, I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> but you sounded like it. Well, the funny thing is so. I've been reading a lot of textbooks, and so yeah. I feel like an expert, but I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, kind of like everyone on YouTube. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, snap, that's kidding, going in the video. But, but not. But not yeah. really. Cool. <laughs> we're going to do a little bit of shooting in the hangar. So I know many of our followers are gonna have this question, but what's what's your what's your thought behind flying? I know for like the off-grid channel, it probably doesn't seem super intuitive because it doesn't really jive with being an off-gridder. I guess, and I mean, as it pertains to off-grid, I believe it does because it's just another means of transportation. So listen, I don't know where we're gonna be the rest of our lives. And so we've talked about exploring more, more remote areas or even just being able to access more remote areas. So. What better way to do that than fly? I think more, it's just a personal passion. I think it represents for me like another step in life. I don't wanna limit myself. I've kind of explored some of the other challenging stuff I can do on the ground. So flying just is like a door of opportunity and it's gonna hopefully will benefit us through our life. I don't know exactly how. I think a lot of people don't know about being a pilot is that there's a lot of things that pilots do that aren't flying. And so when you live in a rural area like we do, you need to keep your doors of opportunity open. And there's actually a lot of opportunity at this airport um, to do a lot of different things that aren't flying related, but they keep you around airplanes, keep you around people, stuff like that. So, so I think for a lot of people that probably would be prejudiced because of the cost of learning to fly. And, and some people go in the military and they learn to fly that way. But the reality is if you want to do something, you're gonna find a way to do it. Having a pilot in a family, I think just changes the whole family. It's not something that's for yourself. It's not like getting a tattoo. You know, um, everybody benefits. And so we're hoping we can kind of start that, that pattern in our family by creating pilots in the family. I mean, it's very different flying a small airplane versus flying commercially. So. Mm -hmm. And it allows you a lot of freedom. I mean, there's like an airport every 30 miles. So yep. where can't you go? I think it's probably easy to look at, if you've been following us for a while, to, to look at Alyssa and I's life and, and immediately make prejudicial statements like, you know, how could you even prioritize a pilot's license if you don't even have a house? And I think, I think we've been waiting a long time to say this. We didn't move up here to obsess over every last thing. And that, that like, starvation, um, fight or flight fear that so many people have about not having a home is, is just, it's unattractive. <laughs> it's just not, it's not even pleasant. It's, it's like vomit. That's the best word. So Alyssa and I are going that direction and we will get there when we get there and we're okay with that. And we've spent hours talking about these things. And I know that, well, we, ha we have what we need, a friend, you probably heard of him, his name is Nick Fouch. Runs a channel called Fouchomatic. He said on the phone one time, he said, don't forget to live life. There's no trophy, no trophy for getting your house done. There's no trophy. You could literally work yourself to the bone and I think he, of anybody, can speak to that because he just built a house. And yep. so I'm listening to him because he's been through it and I think a lot of the people who are just, you know, they're, they're making hot air, have never built a home, they've never built a home themselves, they might have hired a contractor, yep. and that's not the same. This is not meant to be a justification. We're hoping that the people who watch this who have the right mindset will see this and think, got it, like, don't worry so freaking much about it. It's not self-consuming. We don't obsess over it every night, go to bed and think, oh, I hate my life, I know I don't live like this. Yeah. Like, there are times where we're uncomfortable. There's times well, where living small ear takes the crap out What's of funny us. is putting pressure on ourselves or on each other or guilting each other for having fun instead of building the house. It actually is very destructive to a relationship. So I think yes. we talk about how we try to find ways to have balance and the house will get built. 
yeah, we'll get there. And, and I know when we get there, it's gonna be really, really satisfying. So to kind of add to that, let me just kind of create some punctuation to this. So the thing about pilot school is you can't just do it whenever you want, not where we're located. Um, so the, the benefit here is this is actually being held at my local airport. Um, and so what happens is they only held ground school during the winter and pilot training is, is, can be really lax or really strict, but it really just depends on your budget. Obviously I'd like to keep my budget as minimal as possible. So I'm taking this ground school and doing my flight training locally. And that's a huge benefit because if I had to travel a hundred miles away, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't. It's just too time consuming. And so I'm willing to make exceptions because it is winter time. We are working on other projects on the property, but it's a little bit of a lull in some of the stuff that we're working on. So I want to pounce on that and try to get through ground school. The thing about pilot training, the flight side, is I'm completely in control of that. So I can fly when I have time and when I have money. It's not something that I have to commit $10,000 to today. And yeah. I'm in or I'm out. Um, anyway, so that's a little bit about what I'm doing with this flight school stuff, why we do it, how it fits our life. And hopefully people can see that going off grid doesn't mean that you become a prisoner to that life or that lifestyle or to that, you know, that living standard or whatever it is. We feel very positive about where we're going. Back on the island, life as usual. Well, it's gotta wear off eventually. So back to the grind <laughs> yep. of off-grid living. Excited to see where this takes us. Hopefully we can share some updates in some of our future videos, along with other fun stuff that we're doing.